Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the energies of the pi conjugated system in linear pentadiene, which is a five carbon chain, such as this. Recall that to find the energies, we have to solve an equation involving a secular determinant, which would have the following structure for linear pentadiene. And this is set equal to zero to solve for the energies. The determinant has this particular structure because in the molecule, carbon one is only connected to carbon two, carbon two is connected to one and three, and then so on. Recall also that we can use our assignment of letting x equal quantity alpha minus the energy divided by beta, and then we can transform this equation uh, into the more tidy Our next step in the solution is to expand this 5 by 5 determinant as a linear combination of 4 by 4 determinants. We will proceed to expand this 5 by 5 determinant using the method of expansion by minors. Our first coefficient is going to be the x. We're going to go down the left column. So our first coefficient is x. And then it multiplies the 4 by 4 determinant that's formed by getting rid of the first column and the first row. So that leaves 1, 0, 1, x, 1, 0, 0, 1, x, 1, So that is the first term. To get the second term, we use the second entry in the first column, which is a one, and we alternate the signs of the coefficient, so that becomes a minus one. And then it multiplies the four by four determinant that we get by removing the first row and the second column. So we have now reduced our 5 by 5 determinant into a linear combination of 4 by 4 determinants. We cannot directly evaluate a 4 by 4 determinant, so we have to uh, simplify these determinants as well. And again, we're going to use the method of expansion by minors. We can pull our x coefficient out in front. And then our expansion for the 4 by 4 determinant will be within the brackets. We will expand down the first column. So the first coefficient is an x. And we remove the first column in the first row. And that forms a 3 by 3 determinant. Our second coefficient is the minus 1. So recall that we alternate the signs. 
and now we use the determinant formed by removing the first column in the second row. So that gives us 1, 0, 0, 1, x, 1, 0, 1, x. We have reduced the 4 by 4 determinant that was shown in purple. Now we proceed to do the same thing for the 4 by 4 determinant in orange. Again, we pull out the coefficient in front, the minus 1 here, and our reduction of the 4 by 4 determinant will be shown inside the braces. We can save work by expanding across the top row. So let's use the first entry as our coefficient. And again, we have a form a 3 by 3 determinant. We leave out the first column and the first row. So that gives our determinant as being x, 1, 0, 1, x, 1, 0, 1, x. And we can stop at that point because if we expand across the top row, the only non-zero entry is the 1. So that saves us some work. We can simplify our expression a little further by using the distributive law to distribute the coefficient in front over the remaining terms. x times x is x squared times the first 3 by 3 determinant. For our second term, we have x multiplied by minus 1, so that makes the coefficient minus x times 1, 0, 0, 1, x, 1, 0, 1, x. And then last but not least, we have minus 1 times 1. So we have minus, I'm going to ignore the 1 for the time being, x, 1, 0, 1, x, 1, 0, 1, x. And this combination of 3 by 3 determinants and their coefficients is equal to 0. Now that we have a linear combination of 3 by 3 determinants, we can proceed to expand them by minors as well. So for the first term in blue, we have x squared. We expand down the first column, so our first coefficient is x. Our second coefficient is going to be a minus 1 because we alternate the signs. 1, 0, 1, x. Now for the second term in green, our coefficient is going to be a minus x. And our coefficient, we use a 1 first. And then the cofactor is going to be x, 1, 1, x. And then we notice that if we expand across the top, our only non-zero coefficient is going to be 1. So we can stop at that point, which is quite helpful. And then for the final term, for the term in black, we have a leading coefficient of a minus 1. And now again, we expand down the first column. So that gives us x times x1, 1, 1, x minus 1 times 1, 0, 1, x. And this is all equal to 0. Again, we want to use the distributive law to simplify the expressions we have here. So that gives us x cubed times x1, 1, 1, x minus x squared times 1, 0, 1, x. And those are the terms in blue. Then for green, we have minus x times the minus 1. So x, 1, 1, x. And then for the terms in black, we have minus x times x, 1, 1, x. Now minus times a minus 1 gives us a plus 1. 
So now we have 1, 0, 1, x. And this is all equal to 0. Note that we have two matrices here that are identical, x1, 1x, that have the same coefficient, minus x. So we can combine them into a single determinant. So if we do that, our whole expression becomes as follows. Minus x squared, 1, 0, 1, x. Now we'll have a minus 2x times x1, 1, x plus 1, 0, 1, x. And this is all equal to 0. Since all the determinants that we have now are 2 by 2s, and we can evaluate 2 by 2 determinants on site, we are now able to simplify even further. x cubed, x squared minus 1, minus x squared, and this just gives us x, minus 2x, and this particular 2 by 2 determinant is x squared minus 1, plus, here we have x minus 0 is equal to x. So this is all equal to 0. So this gives us x to the fifth minus x cubed minus x cubed minus 2x cubed plus 2x plus x equals 0. Again, we can combine this even further to give us x to the fifth minus 4x cubed plus 3x equals 0. We can immediately factor out an x from this polynomial. And we're left with a quadratic. So again, we're going to use a common substitution, of letting y equal x squared, which converts this polynomial to y squared minus 4y plus 3 equals 0. And this is a fortunately easy to factor polynomial as y minus 3 times y minus 1 equals 0. So that gives us that y is equal to 3 or y is equal to 1. And now we go back into the uh, assignment here that y is equal to x squared. So that tells us that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. we had already seen that x is a factor. Um, so that tells us that x equals 0. And then uh, y equals 1, substitute it back into y equals x squared, tells us that x can equal plus or minus 1. So we have five roots of a fifth order polynomial, which is what we would expect to have got. Since we have five distinct roots, that means we're going to have five distinct non-degenerate energy levels. Recall that we started off with the assignment A equals alpha minus the energy divided by beta. So that tells us that our energy states are going to be as follows. That the lowest energy is going to be alpha plus the square root of 3 beta, then alpha plus beta, then alpha followed by alpha minus beta, and then the highest energy state is going to be alpha minus the square root of 3 beta. Recall that beta is a negative number. So the plus betas are going to go be lower in energy. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.